Richard Johnson, thanks for joining me. We're here ahead of training, back at the home of cricket. Final game of six uh, before we move into T20. Obviously, let's focus first up on the Surrey game. A tough gig down at the Oval. Yeah, tough gig. Um, look, take the result out for a second. It's more disappointing without performance. Yeah. Pride ourselves on uh, our identity, and we certainly didn't do that in this last game. Um, we certainly put together uh, a good opening partnership on, on that first day in, in really difficult circumstances. And that probably flattered us a little bit because that, that certainly was a wicket that yeah, sure. being 160 for one was probably realistic. But then we, to not take advantage of that um, by making us difficult in that middle period, we should have come through that. Even with a collapse, we should have had more than the 43 for nine, absolutely 100%. Uh, so we're very disappointed about that as a, as a group. Uh, and then and then we didn't bowl well enough, no. didn't bowl to plan. We had plans put in place and we didn't follow them. Uh, that's my responsibility. I've got to make sure that, that that's better next time around. Um, and then once we got those plans together and bowled better, uh, I think we had them 190 for seven after that. So we yep. would have been back in the game if we'd done it to start with. Uh, so we missed a couple of opportunities, but you know, playing against obviously a very good side, um, the result went against us, but it's more the performance that I'm disappointed in more than more than anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's focus on the batting first up. It's kind of hard to look beyond that nine wicket loss for 40 odd. Um, was it the manner in which we gave our wickets away that was the most disappointing? Because I know we've spoken at length about the discipline you're trying to drive into the batters about shot selection and when to leave, when to play. A lot of stuff played at around fourth, fifth, sixth stump, edges to slip. That, I guess, must be the biggest frustration, really, that we're getting out of shots that we don't need to play shots to. Absolutely. Uh, we talk about our identity and what, what we're about as a team, and that's not it, you know, yeah. and, and we went away from it massively. Um, it, it was an unusual pitch for us to play on. Uh, it bounced quite a lot. Uh, we probably haven't played on one of those for, for a while, and, and sometimes with bounce, you, you, you can get drawn into shots that you don't normally play. Yeah. Um, but it's still, that's not an, that's not an excuse. That's something we have to get better at. Um, yes, it's a quality bowling attack. We know that. Uh, they're champions for a reason. Yeah. Um, they're right up there again. But as I say, it's the manner of the performance rather than the actual result that I'm really disappointed in. Yeah, I mean, you talk about the importance of keeping level. Win a game, don't get too high. Lose a game, don't get too down. I suppose we're not the only side that's going to go to the Oval and get gubbed. They're a damn good side for a reason. They're champions for a reason. You look at their lineup; they're rampacked full of international cricketers. For me, you look at the positives coming out of that. Whilst the disappointment is there with the performance and the manner, you look at the positives coming out of that. We've had a bad spell with the bat. We've not necessarily been on it at all times with the ball. Had we managed those two things better, we're in the game again. Yeah, look, you can look at that every single game, can't yeah. you? Uh, look, what you said earlier about not getting too up, not getting too down, staying level. I, I always look at, and we've talked about for the last year and a bit now, if you look at your performance and you drive your performance and you play to your identity, mm. the more times you do that, the more consistent you become, and then the results will come because of that. Um, so if we would performed and come out the wrong side of the game because they were better than us, yes. absolutely, I, I can live with that. But the fact that we didn't perform and came out the wrong yeah. side, that's the bit that that frustrates and hurts. Yeah, for sure. I guess some positives to come from that game. Nice for Robbo to spend some time out there in the middle. Nice for Max to spend some time out there in the middle. Runs desperately needed for the pair of them, I guess. Yeah, there were, there were little phases of the game that, that, that went really nicely, as we talked about. Um, individuals are scoring runs at times. We've now got to bring it all together yeah. uh, you know, in, in an innings. Um, I said, I think, pre uh, the Oval, pre Surrey, it's been tough for the batters. You know, you look across the country, there's not many batting points in the whole country. Uh, yeah. It's been a really difficult start to the year. The weather's not been great. It's been cold, it's been wet, it's been damp, it's been overcast, the lights have been on most days. You know, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, we just need to make sure that, you know, we keep pushing the right um, areas with our uh, performances, our identity, um, and we know we'll come out on the right side more often if we do that. You mentioned, John, that it was a tough, bouncy, hard track down there, something we haven't really played on yet this season. Uh, we saw Higo take one on the on the kind of forearm. Uh, we saw Milan hobble off and, and obviously back with a runner. Uh, you're back at training. I know both of the lads are involved this morning, which is great to see. Uh, both will be included in the squad. What's the situation with them? You'll make a late call on them medically? Yeah, late call tomorrow. Um, 
they're both. Uh, Higo, I think, will be will be fine. We'll make a late call on on, on Pete in the morning, yep. um, and we'll yeah we'll have a look in the morning to make a final decision. Good stuff. Um, looking at the seam unit um, for just a moment, obviously the oval is not normally the kind of wicket that you would look at someone like Tim Murtagh and go, it's his kind of pitch. Obviously, having taken a ten for here the week before, was it difficult to leave him out at the oval? Uh, and therefore, three games on the bounce. Does that? Where does that leave him for this one? It, it's always difficult to leave Mertz out. He's got 950 first-class wickets. Um, it, I, I've said all along we've got five high-quality seamers and some really good backup guys as well. Yep. Um, it, it's always difficult to pick the four for the game. Sometimes we might pick a five. Who knows? But it's difficult to pick four. Uh, Helmy so far last week missed out on a pitch that might have suited him, but. I think there was enough in the pitch for everybody to to, to bowl well and, and compete on. Um, we'll, we'll make a call after having a look at the pitch again in the morning. We'll make our final call on, on the 11. Um, I, I don't think it, you know, Mertz can play generally. Mertz plays every single game of a, a championship season, so there's no worries about him playing no, three on a bounce. Yeah, he's hardly coming charging enough for long run up, is he? <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, this week's opponent, Somerset. Obviously a former stomping ground, much like Surrey of your own. Yeah, had had six, seven really good years down in, in Somerset. Really enjoyed my time down there, lived down there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, still some friends at the club. Uh, Jason Kerr, um, Andy Hurry, two two friends of mine uh, leading the club. So, yeah, it'd be nice to catch up with them. Uh, Somerset are always a, a really tough opponent. Yeah. Uh, they're an established first division team. They work hard, they fight hard. Um, you know that if you turn Somerset over, you've had to work really hard throughout the game. So we, we're well aware of the threat, uh, well aware of how difficult this week is going to be. And as I said before, if we, if we concentrate on us and concentrate on our identity and what we are as a team, um, then we'll obviously compete. Absolutely. Uh, John, our last one on the format switch up. Obviously, this is our last four-day game. Uh, we then go into T20 action as of next week, and then you've got a prolonged spell of Vitality Blast. What difficulties does that pose to you as a squad in terms of transitioning from red to white ball and, and training accordingly for the T20 game? Yeah, it's the same for everybody. It, yeah. it, it comes around pretty quick. Yeah, uh, the guys that aren't involved in the in, in our championship cricket that will be involved in the white ball have already started, obviously, practicing white ball stuff. Yeah. Um, our guys that are involved in the championship, we, we've had opportunities to have little goes with white ball as well. So we're starting to get our thinking over that side. All the planning's in place, all the analysis is in place. Um, all we need now is, is a nice couple of days at the end of this game to, to get a bit of white ball practice in. It's not perfect, it's not ideal. You'd always want a bit longer, but every county's got the same um, problem. So we'll, uh, we'll deal with it and cope with it as best we can and, and be ready to face Surrey here on, on next Thursday, um, which would be a great start to, the, start to the series. Yeah, that it will. I did say that was the last one. I do want to ask one more uh, on Higo. Uh, obviously, I think when we spoke last week uh, ahead of the Surrey game, Higo had been named in the PCA Player of the Month team, hadn't been named as PCA Player of the Month, which he's obviously subsequently been. Hugely important player for us in April and May so far. Um, going into the T20s, I guess the importance of someone like Higo in the squad gets no less. Absolutely. Um, you know, I spoke to him this morning about his workloads for the summer. We know that it, it, he's going to potentially play every single game, every single day of cricket we have this year if he stays injury free. We've got to manage that through with how we work him during practices and, and give him enough time to relax and, and have off. Um, it, it's, he's going to be an integral part of our T20 team. And so we're going to have to work that through with him. Um, he so far is probably, workload has been slightly less from a bowling point of view from what he's used to at Gloucester, which is a good thing. Um, so, you know, as you've just said, he's one player in a month. He's an integral part of what we do, Absolutely. and I'll be trying my hardest to look after him as we as we go through with 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 how we manage his uh, practices and stuff. Good stuff. Well, Jono, as the ground staff have just destroyed all of your audio with their mowers. They didn't. Uh, want to, no one. Wanted no one wanted to hear about that. So uh, summary of that: you're going to wrap Higo up in cotton wool <laughs> and look after him throughout the year. Jono, all the very best of luck in the coming four days. Um, hopefully, we can finish off the four-day stuff. Uh, this first batch of with a nice win. Uh, we're nicely positioned in the table, something to build on. Yep, and uh, just make sure you get some of that sun cream on that head of yours. It's looking <laughs> a bit pink. Yeah, for sure, mate. Thank you.